A quick summary of the Old Testament. The Old Testament is the period from creation, around 4000 BC, to the period of the Persian Empire and Cyrus, the king of Persia, who allowed the Jews to return from captivity and rebuild their temple. The Old Testament ended around 400 BC. The Old Testament can be summarized by nine main historical periods, and those are the creation, Abraham and the Hebrew patriarchs, Moses and the Exodus, Joshua and the conquest of Canaan, Samson and the judges, David and Solomon, the divided kingdom, the destruction of Israel and Judah, and Ezra and the return from captivity. Historical period number one, the creation and fall period, 4004 BC to 2234 BC. The main events of creation, Genesis chapters 1 through 11, were number one, the creation of the heavens and the earth and all living things, including mankind. God created everything in six days and rested on the seventh day to establish the Sabbath day. Number two, the fall of Adam and Eve and sin and death entering into the world. God made a covering for them, indicating that it was only through the blood of a substitute that they could approach God. God pronounced a curse upon man and upon woman and upon the serpent. And he also declared that the Messiah would someday come and crush the head of the serpent. Genesis 3.15 Number three, the flood which came upon the whole world and God saved Noah and his family. And number four, the Tower of Babel where rebellious mankind gathered and God came down and divided their languages. Historical period number two, the Abraham and Sons period, 1996 to 1689 BC. The main people surrounding Abraham and the Hebrews, Genesis chapters 12 through 50, were number one, Abraham, who was the first Hebrew. God called him from a distant land in the Middle East called Ur the Chaldees and promised him that if he would obey God, that God would multiply his descendants as the sand in the seashore and as the stars in the sky and one of his descendants would be the savior of all mankind. Number two, Isaac, Abraham's child that was born in his old age according to the promise of the Lord. His name means laughter because Abraham's wife Sarah laughed when she was going to bear a son in her old age. Number three, Jacob, who was the father of the 12 tribes of Israel. Jacob's name actually means deceiver, but he trusted God and God turned everything about his life into a blessing. Later, God appeared to him and changed his name to Israel. And number four, Joseph, who was the favorite son of Jacob. His beloved wife, Rachel, died giving birth. To he was gifted in that he could interpret dreams and his brothers were jealous of him and sold him into slavery in the land of Egypt. But God was with him, and through these peculiar circumstances, Joseph was able to save the Hebrews from extinction. Historical period number three, the Moses and Exodus period, 1571 to 1451 BC. The main events of the period of Moses, Exodus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy were Number one, the calling of Moses when the Hebrews were in the land of Egypt. The Pharaoh had ordered the death of all Hebrew male babies because they were growing so rapidly. Moses was born and grew up in the house of Pharaoh. Later he developed a yearning to seek after the Hebrew God whom he met at a burning bush. Moses later returned to free the Hebrew slaves. Number two, the ten plagues and the exodus. This was a period of time when Moses and Aaron came into the house of Pharaoh and demanded to let the people of Israel go. Pharaoh refused and after a series of ten plagues, the Hebrews escaped Egypt after putting the blood of a lamb 
upon the doorposts of their homes to protect them from the death angel that would strike the land of Egypt. The Hebrews escaped with all the wealth of Egypt, and the Lord appeared in a pillar of fire and led them through the Red Sea. Later the Egyptians became furious and chased after them, and the waters collapsed upon the chariots of Egypt. Number three, the giving of the law at Mount Sinai. This was when the Hebrews came to Mount Sinai and God gave Moses the Ten Commandments. The Hebrews rebelled while waiting for Moses and built a golden calf. When Moses came down from the mountain, he broke the tables of stone. Later God wrote the Ten Commandments with his own fingers on a new set of stone tablets. He also gave Moses a description of the tabernacle, which was a tent that God's presence would dwell in throughout their journeys until they entered the Promised Land. And number four, the 40 years of wandering in the wilderness. This was when the children of Israel would not believe in the promises of God and they desired to go back to the land of Egypt and back into slavery again. When they came to Kadesh Barnea to look over the land that God had promised them, they sent 12 spies to look over the land. But when they heard that there were giants, they became afraid and only Joshua and Caleb had the courage to move with the promises of God. This lack of faith caused them to wander in the wilderness for 40 years. Historical period number four, the Joshua and Conquest period, 1451 to 1443 BC. The main events surrounding Joshua and the Conquest were number one, the death of Moses, which was the period when Moses gave his final speech to the Hebrews regarding all the promises that God had given to them. He reminded them that if they would obey God, they would be blessed. But if they disobeyed God, they would be cursed and scattered throughout the earth. And a sword of persecution would follow them wherever they went. Moses died on Mount Nebo after becoming frustrated with the people and losing the blessing of God in entering the land. He would only see the land, and then it would be Joshua who would lead them in. Number two, the crossing of the Jordan which was the event when the Hebrews crossed over into the Promised Land, the land flowing of milk and honey. Joshua led them in ordering the priests to carry the Ark of the Covenant and the waters of the Jordan split in two as they entered into the Promised Land. Joshua set up a memorial to remember the great event. And number three, the seven years of conquering the land of Canaan which was a time of conquering the rebellious idolaters that inhabited the land. They were instructed to conquer and destroy, yet they were disobedient because they did not conquer all the land as they were instructed. They did not drive out the Canaanites and they intermarried with Canaanite women. The three most prominent deities of Canaanite worship were Baal, Asherah, and Dagon. Number four, settling in the land of Canaan, where the territory was divided among the 12 tribes. And later Joshua gave a farewell speech to encourage the people and also to warn them what would happen if they disobeyed. He told them, choose this day whom you will serve. Historical period number five, the Judges and Samuel period, 1443 to 1095 BC. The main events during the period of the Judges were number one, the seven cycles of sin, bondage, deliverance, and blessing. Every generation fell into this terrible cycle. First, they would forget God's commands and commit idolatry. Second, a foreign invasion would take place and bring severe oppression. Third, they would cry out to God for help. And fourth, God would send a judge or deliverer to save them. And number two, the first 300 years of Israel's history. The book of Judges begins just after the death of Joshua and ends with Samuel, the last judge of Israel. After this was the period of the kings. Number three, the deliverer judges. These deliverer judges came by the hand of God to help the oppressed Israelites. The main judges were Othniel, a nephew of Caleb, who delivered Israel from the Mesopotamians. 
Ehud, who was left-handed and killed Eglon, the king of Moab, and Jephthah, who was a harlot's son who defeated the Amorites, and Gideon, who led 300 Israelites to defeat the army of 130,000 Midianites, and Samson, who was known for his great strength, delivered Israel from the Philistines, and Deborah, who urged Barak to attack the mighty army of the Canaanites. And number four, the oppressors. They were foreign invaders that would come and torment Israel. First, there were the Mesopotamians, second, the Moabites, then the Philistines, and then the Canaanites. And after them were the Midianites, and later the Ammonites, and then again came the Philistines. Historical period number six, the David and Solomon period, 1085 to 922 BC. The main people during the period of the kings were, number one, Samuel, who was the first of the great prophets of Israel. His mother Hannah had been barren her whole life and prayed to the Lord for a son, promising that she would dedicate his life to the service of the Lord if he would fulfill her desire. God answered her prayer and Samuel became famous in the land for his prophecies. He anointed the first king of Israel, Saul, and he also anointed David. Number two, Saul. Saul was the first king of Israel. The people had cried for a king because the lands around them all had a king, but the Lord was their king. The Lord finally told Samuel to go ahead and anoint Saul from the tribe of Benjamin, a very good looking man who was head and shoulders taller than any other man in the kingdom. But Saul had an evil heart and God gave them a king who was fashioned after their own image because they had evil hearts. Saul spent most of his life hunting down David so that he could destroy him because he knew that David was the Lord's anointed. And number three, David. David was Israel's rightful king who was chosen by the Lord and anointed by Samuel the prophet. David was a man after God's own heart. He was from Bethlehem. When he was still a young boy, he fearlessly slew the Philistine giant Goliath who had taunted the armies of God. David defeated him with a sling and a stone. David spent much of his life running from King Saul. But finally, when King Saul died, seven years later, the tribes crowned David king at Hebron. David was a warrior king, and because of that, he was not allowed to build the temple which he so longed to do. He would pass on that task to his son Solomon, the man of peace. Number four, Solomon. Solomon was the son of David who built the temple in Jerusalem. During a dream, during a dream, God offered to Solomon anything he wanted. And Solomon asked for wisdom to lead God's people. Because of this, God gave him great power and great wealth and his fame was known throughout the world. Solomon made a mistake by marrying the daughters of foreign kings. He allowed them to build altars to their gods and this brought a great downfall to Israel. By the time Solomon was in his old age, the kingdom was ready to be split in two. Historical period number seven, the divided kingdom period. 922 to 722 BC. The main events and people during the period of the divided kingdom, which were the books of Samuel and 1 Kings, were number one, the civil war that happened when Solomon died in 922 BC as Solomon's sons and military commanders struggled for the throne. Solomon had blessed Rehoboam to be the new king but Jeroboam had more military influence. Each claimed to be God's chosen king. Number two, Israel and Judah. Finally, after the struggle, 10 tribes went to the north following Jeroboam, and they called themselves the Northern Kingdom of Israel. The remaining two tribes in the south made Rehoboam their king, and the southern kingdom was called Judah. Number three, Isaiah. 
Isaiah was a great prophet who lived in Jerusalem during the time when the Assyrians were rising to power, around 740 BC. He warned Jerusalem and her kings about their idolatry and their foreign allegiances. He spoke about the captivities that would come in the north and in the south. Isaiah was one of the great prophets and he spoke more about the Messiah than any other book in the Old Testament. When the Dead Sea Scrolls were discovered, the scroll of Isaiah was found in perfect condition. Number four, Jeremiah. Jeremiah was one of the great prophets and he lived during the time of the Babylonians who were coming to power around 620 BC. He spoke against Judah and all the cities in the whole territory about the folly of idolatry. He prophesied that Jerusalem would be destroyed and her temple would be plundered by the Babylonians. He said that the Jews would be taken away from their land to the land of Babylon, the land of idolatry, for 70 years and then they would return. He also spoke about a new covenant in chapter 31 that would come in the future where God would write the law on men's hearts. At this point, an interesting subject to bring up is the subject of the Messiah. The coming Messiah is woven into every part of the Old Testament. The Bible traces the blood lineage of the Messiah beginning with Adam and Eve and then traces the blood lineage all the way to Noah and his son Shem. Then the Bible reveals that the Messiah would come through the line of Abraham and then Isaac and then Jacob and then from Jacob's 12 sons, Judah would be the one that the Messiah would descend from. Finally, the lineage passes on to a man named Boaz who had a grandson named Jesse who lived in Bethlehem and one of his sons was David who would be the promised seed and become king of Israel. The book of Matthew in the New Testament traces the entire lineage of the Messiah from King David all the way to Jesus Christ, the son of Joseph and Mary who was born in a manger in Bethlehem, the city of David. The prophet Daniel around 550 BC predicted the exact date that the Messiah would die and be cut off, which would take place 483 years after the decree of the king of Persia to allow the Jews to restore and rebuild Jerusalem. Historical period number eight, the destruction of Israel and Judah period, 722 to 586 BC. The main events and people during the period of the fall of Israel and Judah in 2 Kings were number one, the prophets who appeared during the time of the kings of Israel and Judah. The prophets were mouthpieces of God bringing his message to a rebellious people who had forsaken the Lord. The prophets of the Assyrian period were Jonah, Joel, Amos, Hosea, Isaiah, Micah, Zephaniah, and Nahum. The prophets of the Babylonian period were Jeremiah, Habakkuk, Ezekiel, Obadiah, and Daniel. The last prophets were of the Persian period, and they were Haggai, Zechariah, and Malachi. Number two, the fall of Israel in 722 BC. The fall of Israel happened because of all the kings in the northern kingdom of Israel were wicked, every one of them. They were idol worshipers, and they forsook the commandments of the Lord until the Assyrians came an unstoppable army and destroyed their capital in the north and led them away as prisoners to the land of Assyria, which is modern day Iraq, in the northern portion of the Tigris River. These were known as the ten lost tribes of Israel because no one knows what happened to them exactly. Number three, revival in Jerusalem. Revival happened because eight of the kings in the southern kingdom of Judah sought the Lord and the other 20 were wicked. The kings who served the Lord were Asa, Jehoshaphat, Joash, Amaziah, Uzziah, Jotham, Hezekiah, and Josiah. Number four, the fall of Judah in 586 BC. The fall of Judah happened because they had forsaken the Lord and disaster was inevitable. King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon conquered Jerusalem in 586 BC and took them out of the land to the land of Babylon, 
the land of idolatry. Historical period number nine, the return from captivity period, 539 to 400 BC. The main events and people during the return from captivity, which were the books of Ezra, Nehemiah, and Esther, were number one, Cyrus, who allows the Jews to return after 70 years. Cyrus of Persia conquered Babylon around 540 BC. It was by the hand of God that Persian tradition was to allow conquered peoples to return to their homelands and rebuild their cities and temples as long as they paid their taxes to the Persian Empire. Cyrus made a decree allowing the Jews to return home and rebuild their temple. Unfortunately, only a small portion of Jews returned. Number two, Zerubbabel, Ezra, and Nehemiah. The first move back to Israel was led by Zerubbabel, who was of royal blood from the house of David. They found Jerusalem in ruins with a mixed breed of corrupt Jews, Samaritans, who were living there. But in spite of this, they laid the foundations of the new temple and built an altar to the Lord in 536 BC. They finished the work on the temple by 516 BC, exactly 70 years after they were taken captive, just as Jeremiah the prophet had predicted. Later in 458 BC, more Jews returned with a man named Ezra, a priest and a scribe. Shortly after this, Nehemiah obtained permission to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem, which miraculously happened within 52 days in 444 BC. Number three, the Temple of Zerubbabel, which was known as the Second Temple. It was a remarkable achievement, but nothing compared to Solomon's Temple. Later, it was Herod the Great who had beautified the Temple of Zerubbabel, and so much so that it became a marvel in the ancient world. Number four, the final prophets and the close of the Old Testament. The prophet Malachi warned Israel about turning from the Lord. Ezra and Nehemiah canonized the books of the Old Testament and they were read aloud to the people and interpretation was given. It would not be long before they would again forget about the Lord. During this time, the book of the Old Testament came to a close and it would be 400 more years before John the Baptist would come preaching in the wilderness.